Okay, welcome back to another web development video. Um, in this series, we've been building a CSS Grid website, and I realized uh, once I got to the end that I hadn't actually um, applied the grid, which is a big faux pas of mine. So I'm coming back and I'm uh, making that fix now, and I'm going to show you uh, exactly how to make that fix um, for yourself. So I'm going to insert this near uh, number two in the series so that you'll have this uh, going forward and you'll be able to utilize it now here's our website and I've already made the website and the website is fine it's um, it's built not with CSS uh, grid necessarily in mind um, and and that was because I made this mistake early on where I didn't add the superstructure grid um, which was the whole point of this series so I'm really sorry about that but um, if we look at our structure here we have our grid wrapper that's supposed to wrap all of the website and then in there we have our masthead we have a hero image we have uh, this features section a little call out with the background image we have our blog and then we have our footer so all of these elements are potentially child elements of the grid wrapper uh, now what we do whenever we come down to the grid wrapper this is the code as it as it has been and it it doesn't work uh, yet because I haven't declared the grid on it so once I say display grid you can see that it breaks everything and the reason it's breaking everything is that it's we're declaring a 12 column 100 pixel wide per column grid structure and so it's taking each of these child elements and it's making them 100 pixels wide, which you can see. So, you know, our masthead is 100 pixels, our hero image, our featured section, this is our uh, background image section, the footer. So everything is being given uh, 100 pixels wide and 12 columns across. And there's a gap of 30 pixels uh, for each one. I think you could probably see it if I just inspect the grid okay so you can see that our grid stru structure is being laid out some things are getting uh, a little bit funky because of the um, the size of the text here is not uh, responsive so but you can see that our grid structure is laid out across the page 12 columns and the entire uh, grid structure, it says 1440 now, but that's because I'm limiting it. It's actually 1530 pixels wide. So what we need to do is we need to, we need to make all of, our, uh, all of our elements stretch all the way across the page. That's what we really want. So we want our masthead to go all the way across the page. We want the hero to go from the far left to the far right. So this is this is really what we want with our grid structure. Now one way that we can do that is uh, right now we have a hundred pixels uh, a column structure of 12, 12 columns, a hundred pixels a piece. You could also make this a fluid width. So this is going to make it a fixed width. Um, so it's going to make it's going to come out to you can see here that it's fixed so it starts in the top left and then it's a fixed width all the way out to here now we can make it a fluid width all the way across the viewport uh, by just using the FR unit so we say one FR so that means there's 12 columns each column is taking up uh, one equal portion of space across the viewport so there are 12 equal portions of spacing across the viewport and you can see now that, that it's taking up the entire viewport and if we were to change that then that would also it should change yeah, it's not changing because of uh, some other reason oh it could be the text that's keeping it from changing but everything is not fully responsive on here yet um, so if you want it to only take up um, an equal amount of space and not a fixed amount of space then you use the FR unit 
All right. <coughs> uh, one side note is if you use the FR unit here and it's fluid, you don't need the grid gap because we're not really creating any gaps in our particular uh, structure. So uh, you don't necessarily need that unless you're um, actually, cause, because each of these elements is going to span uh, all of the columns then it doesn't really matter because we're just we're spanning all the columns this only matters really uh, if you're trying to create some spacing between your columns and your rows so you may or may not need to use the grid column gap all right so once we have our our structure set up here what we want is we want to take our masthead and we want to stretch it all the way across all 12 columns so we come in and we say masthead and we use what's called the grid column property um, I keep misspelling column there's an N there and then what we wanted to do is we wanted to start at uh, grid line 1 which is the very far left side of the page and then we wanted to stretch all the way across to the very end of the page there are a couple different ways to do that one is to say uh, start at grid column 1 and then a forward slash and then we can use minus one so one forward slash minus one will give you uh, an element that stretches all the way across the page so you see how that works <clears throat> and another way to declare the same thing is to say grid column start in one and then you say span all and that's also that should also give you the exact same thing so you're spanning all of the columns um, this works I believe if you're doing uh, from the beginning like if you're doing uh, column one but if you wanted to do starting column four so you start in column four and then you span all of the rest of the elements so maybe just a, a different sort of declaration there not sure if that works the same way here but we can check yeah so the same thing so you can either say span all or you can use this minus one in order to declare that you want to go all the way across the page now we could do that for each and every uh, each and every section so we could go through and say the hero we also want to do the same thing so now we have our masthead and we have our hero stretching all the way across all of our columns um, and then what else do we have? We have features, we have <clears throat> the callout, we have the blog section, and I believe the last one is the footer. So you can see that it stretches back uh, all of our elements across the page. Okay, so again, it's the container element. So this one has a grid inside, but it's the container element that we're most concerned about. Um, another way to do this that is a less specific way is to just find, um, if you've set this up with uh, semantic HTML tags, you can just find all these semantic tags and then you can stretch them out. So you would say header um, section footer and then you give it the grid column um, one slash negative one and you should wind up with the same exact uh, structure because you're just instead of targeting these specific elements you're now just targeting a little bit more general element here so any of the child elements of this grid wrapper that have a header or a section or a footer are all going to be stretched um, one to minus one which is all the way across all the columns so hopefully that makes a little bit more sense um, and then this if you want to get more specific because excuse me what can happen here is that maybe you only want some things str to stretch all the way across and this is what I was trying to point out uh, in this video series is that the 
the power of grid is that once you set the the superstructure grid over the whole uh, website now you can begin to utilize uh, some really interesting things so let's say you only want your masthead to go uh, half so we say one and then half of 12 is six so we have to think of it as one more so this is kind of weird so you start in column one you go six so one plus six is seven so it ends at the start of column seven uh, so now when you come to your website you have uh, this element here that only goes half of the width of the of the website you can come down and you can target the hero image and you could say uh, let's say we want that one to start in seven and we want it to go to um, let's say span all we just want it to span the rest of the website so now you're gonna get some some kind of funky things here because they're in the same row we haven't declared a row so that's a little bit strange uh, so let's say not seven let's say three we'll make sure that we keep it down okay so now you got this space over here because it's starting at grid line three the start of the third column and then it's going until the end of the website until the edge of the page and you can do that all along with all of the different elements and they can be on this 12 column grid that we've already laid out so let's find it so in this 12 column grid uh, you can see how our website is is moving because this this starts at one and it goes to the end of the sixth column so we have one two three four five six columns and then our hero image is starting at the beginning of the third column and then it's going all the way to the end of the page so uh, when you look at this this is uh, similar to what you're going to see uh, if someone gives you a photoshop file or something like that and uh, there's a 12 column structure that they've used and it's a specific amount of columns and space between the columns and now you can begin to lay out your website very specifically like we've been able to lay out uh, websites using the design phase and we're not having to use floats we're not having to use absolute positioning we're using relative positioning but we're using CSS grid in order to lay things out horizontally and to lay them out vertically so there's a uh, there's a lot of power here uh, once you overlay the superstructure and don't think that you have to do 12 columns you could do six columns you could do uh, 15 columns you can do three columns uh, you can create your grids however you want to and you're not um, stuck and in fact you can even create your grid uh, with different column structures at different sizes so maybe for a mobile phone you don't want to use 12 column structure you want to use a three column or a four column structure you can set that up up to using a media query to be a three or four or two column structure uh, on or even one uh, you can use one uh, and you can do that uh, for each different size using media queries so there's a there's a lot of power here this is this is an underlying framework so you have to think of it uh, it's even more powerful than bootstrap but you have to think of it in that kind of term like it's a superstructure framework for your website so hopefully that um, fills in some of the gaps I know I left that part out and I should not have <laughs> I'm not gonna go back and and repeat the number two video I'm just gonna add this to it so if you have any questions or comments um, I'm sorry this took so long but if you have any questions or comments just leave them down in the comment section below and uh, I'll be happy to get to them. I appreciate you watching, and I'll see you next time.